The Adventures of Mabel by Harry Peck, Chapter 1 1. The Green Lizard Once upon a time there was a little girl named Mabel, who lived in a cottage with her grandma, and her brother Walter, and Jane, the cook. The cottage was not very near any other houses, but was way out beyond the village and near a large wood. The wood was very big, and the trees in it were great tall trees, all covered with leaves, and having thick vines around them, so that even in the middle of the day it was shady and cool. And when the sun began to go down, it was so dark that you could hardly see. Mabel loved the big woods, because when the sun was hot she could go under the trees and play on the moss in the shade of the branches and there was a lovely little brook there with real fishes in it. And sometimes Mabel would go in wading, and the little fishes would swim around her feet and make believe bite them. But they didn't really bite, because they were such little fishes and hadn't any teeth. And ever so far, down in the woods, where it was very shady, Mabel used to find strawberries growing in blackberries, and little red checkerberries all under the green leaves. One day, late in the afternoon, when the sun grew very hot, Mabel was tired of playing with her dolls, so she got a little basket and said to Grandma, Grandma, may I go down in the woods and see if I can pick some strawberries for supper? It's pretty late, said Grandma, but you can go if you won't wander too far away and be out after dark. You know, Mabel, there are animals in the woods that might hurt you, and they come out from their caves as soon as it begins to grow dark. Oh, I'm not afraid of animals, and I won't be late, said Mabel. I'll pick you a basket full of strawberries, and then I'll come straight home. So off she went with her little sunbonnet on her head and with her basket on her arm, down into the big shady woods. When she reached them, she strolled along under the trees over the beautiful soft moss, where the shadows made it nice and cool, and where the birds perched under the thick leaves and sang when they saw her coming. For they all remembered Mabel and liked to see her playing around in the woods. Pretty soon she looked for the place where the strawberries were, and she picked and picked and went further and further into the bushes until she had gone a long way and had filled her little basket nearly full of ripe red berries. And as she picked, the sun sank down behind the hills and the evening began to come on and the little frogs in the brook came out of their holes and peeped. Gracious, said Mabel, all of a sudden. It's getting late. I must go home straight off. But just as she had picked up her basket and was looking for her sunbonnet on the ground, she heard a queer little sound like the squeak of a mouse. What's that? said Mabel, and she looked all around her to see where it was, but there was nothing that she could find. Only the same queer little squeak kept on, as though someone was hurt and was crying with pain. Mabel looked up into the trees and peered around in the grass and looked among the bushes, but she couldn't find out where it was. Well, she said, that's funny, and she stooped down to pick up her sunbonnet, when all of a sudden right at her feet she saw that it, what it was that was making the noise. There, down in the moss, was a little bit of a lizard about as long as Mabel's finger. It was bright green and had a little yellow spot on its head, like a gold crown. And when it saw Mabel looking down, it squeaked again as loud as it could. Dear me, said Mabel, what's the matter, little lizard? Don't you feel well? And then she saw what the trouble was. A big stone had fallen on the end of the lizard's tail and held it down so tight that the lizard couldn't get away. Why, you poor little lizard, cried Mabel. Here, I'll help you. So she took both her plump little hands and gave the stone a big push, and away it went off the lizard's tail. The lizard jumped up and whisked his tail around and felt of it to see if it was broken. When he found that the tail was all right, he climbed up on the stone and looked up into Mabel's face. You're a good girl, said the lizard. He had a pleasant voice and a very good-looking face, only his nose was rather long. Why, I didn't know that lizards could talk, said Mabel. I can, said the lizard. I am the king of all the lizards. Don't you see my crown? And he pointed with one foot to the little yellow spot on the top of his head. I can talk, and I can do other things, and I'm going to do something for you, because you were so good to me. And because you rolled the stone off my tail. Oh, said Mabel politely. You're quite welcome. I hope your tail isn't hurt. Not a bit, said the lizard. And see here, I'm going to do something for you that I wouldn't do for any other little girl. I'm going to make you so that you can understand animal talk. 
and so that all the animals will understand you when you talk. And besides, I'm going to teach you how to make all animals good to you. How's that? asked Mabel. This way, just listen. And the lizard puffed out his cheeks and began to whistle a little call. It was like this. Now, said he, you do it after me. So Mabel puckered up her lips and tried to whistle the call. But she had never learned how to whistle, and so she only made a funny little wheeze that made the lizard laugh so that he nearly fell off the stone. Try again, said the lizard, after he had got his face straight once more. So Mabel tried again and again. She made more little wheezes, and she puffed and blew until she was nearly out of breath. And by and by, she did make a noise that sounded something like the call. Good, said the lizard. That's the way. Try some more. So Mabel tried some more, and pretty soon she could really do it quite well. Now, said the lizard, if you want any animal to be your friend, just whistle that way to him. That's the call of all the animals. Be careful, and don't forget it. Good evening. And before Mabel knew what he was doing, the lizard had jumped off the stone and darted down into a hole in the ground. Well, said Mabel, that's the funniest thing I ever heard of. A lizard talking and teaching me to whistle. But dear me, how late it's getting. I must hurry home as fast as I can. It really was growing very late. The sun had gone away from the sky, and the woods were so dark that Mabel could hardly see where she was going. All the little birds had gone into their nests, and the butterflies were safe at home. It was very still, except for the tree toads and the frogs in the brook peeping mournfully, and every little while Mabel could hear strange rustlings in the leaves. She tried to remember the way home, but the woods looked so different now that she couldn't think which way to go. She began to be frightened, and all of a sudden, way off in the distance, she heard a long howl. What's that? said Mabel. Oh, I'm so frightened. In a minute or two, she heard the howl again. Oh! A long, wild cry. She knew it must be some animal, and she remembered what her grandma had said. Again and again she heard it, and she knew that it was coming nearer. She began to run, but the poor little thing had quite lost her way, and she was really getting further and further into the woods. It was so dark that she stumbled over the bushes and the roots of the trees, and twice she fell down. Near and nearer came the strange howl, and before long she could hear something moving through the bushes. She was now in an open place where it was a little lighter, and as she looked back, all of a sudden she saw a great wolf pushing through the underbrush and coming straight at her. He was twice as big as the biggest dog, and his long red tongue was hanging out of his mouth between his teeth. Mabel thought of Grandma and Walter, and how they would never know what had become of her. And then she remembered what the lizard had told her. The wolf was almost touching her, and she was frightened to death. But she made up her mind to try to whistle the call. Round she turned and looked right in the wolf's face. She could feel his breath. Her lips trembled, but she gave the whistle. Ow! said the great wolf, and he stopped as quick as a wink. Mabel whistled again. The wolf put his tongue in his mouth and hung his head down. Then Mabel saw that his face looked very pleasant and she wasn't afraid any more. After all, he was just like a big dog. Wolf, said Mabel, I want you to be my friend. All right, said the wolf. He had a big growling voice, and he spoke in wolf talk, but Mabel could understand what he said. I've lost my way, wolf, said she. Please show me the way home. I live at Grandma's. I know, said the wolf. I've seen you playing around in the daytime. Put your hand on my neck and I'll show you the way. So Mabel put her hand on the wolf's neck and they went along together. His fur was very soft and long and Mabel rested her hand on it as she walked, for she was very tired. On they went through the woods. The wolf was not much of a talker and Mabel could not think of anything to say, so they kept very still. At last they got to the edge of the woods. There, said the wolf, pointing with his big paw and Mabel could see through the dark her home with a bright light shining from the window. Goodbye, wolf, said Mabel. Thank you very much. I knew you were a good wolf and wouldn't ever hurt little girls, would you?
No, said the wolf in a rather queer voice, and Mabel thought he looked rather sheepish, and that he hung his head rather low. Well, good night, said she, and she put her arms round his big furry neck and gave him a hug. Oh, said the wolf, and he licked her hands with his rough tongue, and then trotted back into the dark woods. Mabel's grandma was standing on the veranda. She was dreadfully worried because Mabel was so late. Mabel! Mabel! She called as she looked out into the dark. Yes, Grandma, said Mabel, and Grandma just rushed down the steps when she heard the little voice and gave Mabel a whole lot of kisses, for she had been afraid that her little girl would never come back home again. After Mabel had had a fine supper in her high chair in the cozy dining room, and when Grandma had undressed her and was putting her to bed, she said, Oh, Grandma, I left my strawberries in the woods. Never mind, Mabel, said Grandma. We can go together tomorrow and get them. But now I want to tell you how frightened I was to have you out so late. Don't you remember I told you there were animals in the woods? Well, this afternoon, your Uncle Robert was here, and he said that only yesterday, when he was going along the path, he saw something in the bushes that looked like a wolf. Think of that. Oh, said Mabel. I don't believe a wolf would hurt a little girl, do you, Grandma? What, a wolf? Mabel, a wolf is the worst animal in the world. If you had met up with a wolf, he would have eaten you all up, every bit of you. Mabel didn't say anything, but she laughed a little to herself, and then turned over in her crib, and curled up on her soft white pillow and went fast asleep. Chapter 2 The Taming of Rex The next morning, Mabel came down late to breakfast. She remembered what happened the day before, but it seemed to her like a dream, and she could scarcely believe that she had really seen the talking lizard and the good old wolf. But she remembered the call, and before she got out of bed, she whistled it over two or three times very softly to herself. While she was eating her bowl of oatmeal and an egg, Grandma, who had finished her own breakfast, said, Mabel, did you hear your Uncle Robert come in last night after you had gone to bed? No, Grandma. Was he here? Yes. He spent the whole evening with me and told me about a horse that he's bought. He's having ever so much trouble with it. Why? What's the matter, Grandma? Oh, it's such a strange horse. Uncle Robert bought him yesterday because he was such a beauty, a great splendid black animal. But now they have found that no one can ride him. When anyone goes up to put on his bridle, he starts up on his hind legs and kicks and rears and then runs across the meadow. Uncle Robert thinks that he'll have to sell him again, or else give him away. Oh, that would be a pity, wouldn't it, Grandma? I do love horses so. May I go down to Uncle Robert's and see him, please? Yes, after breakfast. Only don't stay very long, and don't go too near the horse, because he might kick you. So after Mabel had finished her egg, she slipped down from her high chair and got Grandma to put on her little coat and her straw hat, and off she went down the road. Uncle Roberts's house was about half a mile away, and when Mabel came near, she saw him walking up and down the front yard, talking to John, the man. Hello, Mabel, said Uncle Robert when he saw her. Going to make me a visit? Yes, Uncle Robert, said Mabel. Grandma said I might come down and see the new horse. Oh, said Uncle Robert. So she told you about the horse, did she? Well, he's an awful bother to me. John and I were just going out to the meadow to try him again to see if we can't put a bridle on him and make him mind. You know, yesterday he wouldn't let us go near him. Come now, let's take a look at him. So John got the bridle and they all walked down to the meadow back of the barn, Mabel following along behind trying to keep up with her short little legs. There in the middle of the meadow was a great big black horse quietly eating grass and swishing his tail around to keep off the flies. He was a splendid looking horse, with a long black mane and a glossy coat that shone in the sunlight as though it had been polished with a blacking brush. When he saw that someone was coming into the field, he cocked his head a little to one side and sniffed, but kept right on biting at the clover. Oh, isn't he a beauty? cried Mabel. What's his name? The man who sold him to me said his name was Rex, answered Uncle Robert and he is a beauty to look at, only he's got an awfully bad temper. I wonder if he's any quieter today. Here, John, give me the bridle and I'll tackle him first. 
So Uncle Robert took the bridle and walked very, very slowly into the meadow. Rex didn't stir, but kept on quietly eating. Nearer and nearer and nearer came Uncle Robert, creeping along as softly as he could. I guess he'll get him this time, said John to Mabel. Uncle Robert was now almost up to Rex's head. He spread out the bridle and took the bit in his right hand and made one more move forward. In half a jiffy, he would have had the reins over the horse's neck when, bang! All of a sudden, just like lightning, up went Rex's head. He snorted a tremendous snort and stood straight up on his hind legs. Then he gave a terrific jump into the air, kicked out his heels, and tore away through the grass, plunging and cavorting like a crazy horse. Pa, said John. He's just as bad as ever. Uncle Robert tried again and again, but Rex wouldn't let him come anywhere near him. He kicked and pranced and galloped about the field, until at last Uncle Robert gave it up and came back to where Mabel and John were standing. His hat had blown off, and he was puffing and panting, and his face was as red as a beet. He took out his handkerchief and wiped his forehead. The ugly beast, he said. What did I ever buy him for? He makes me so mad I could shoot him. Let me try him, sir, said John. Perhaps he's tired of running now. Then John took the bridle out of Uncle Robert's hand and started out in his turn. Rex had stopped running and was eating clover again, as quietly as you please. He cocked his head as John crept up, but didn't budge an inch. Whoa, said John, as quietly as he could. Whoa, old horse, whoa. Rex kept very still. John was now at his head and was just about to slip the bridle on when, bang, up went Rex in the air again. Slash went his heels straight out as he turned. His hoofs, with their iron shoes, flew within an inch of John's ear. If they had struck him, they would have knocked his head clean off. Ow! Ow! cried John, frightened half to death. If he'd kicked me, I'd have been a dead man. Then he hurried back to where Uncle Robert and Mabel stood, while Rex went galloping around the meadow again, snorting like mad. Isn't that the worst beast you ever saw? cried Uncle Robert who was dreadfully vexed. I'd sell him or give him away this very afternoon. Mabel kept very still for a moment. Then she looked up into Uncle Robert's face and said in her soft little voice, Uncle Robert, will you let me try to put his bridle on? Uncle Robert stared at her till his eyes nearly popped out of his head. He was too surprised to speak at first, and then he began to laugh. Ha ha, he said. What, you try to put a bridle on him? Ha ha, that's a good joke. Ho ho! roared John. Well, that's the best I ever heard. May I, Uncle Robert? said Mabel. Why, Mabel? said he. It's perfect nonsense for a little girl like you to think of such a thing. The idea of your managing a big, ugly horse. Sure, said John. You're only a little baby yet, and the horse would eat you up or kick you away across the lot. Well, said Mabel, I couldn't do any worse than you did, anyhow. Mabel was angry. She didn't like to be called a baby when she was nearly six years old. Then she turned to Uncle Robert and said, Please, please let me try. Uncle Robert laughed again. Well, Mabel, he said, he'll just run away when you go near him, so it won't do any particular harm. But you're a silly little girl to think that you can do what John and I couldn't. Why, you're so small you'll make the horse laugh to see you coming up to him with a bridle. Never mind said Mabel stoutly. I'd like to see a horse laugh. If I can't put his bridle on him, I'll come back again. So she swung the bridle over her little arm and started out through the clover. She was so small that the clover blossoms came up almost to her neck, and her fluffs of yellow hair touched them as she walked along. It was a pretty picture that she made moving through the thick green grass, and perhaps this was why Rex stopped munching clover long before she came near him and began looking at the little figure that was marching straight toward him as he stood with his head high up in the air. Perhaps, though, he thought that he could frighten her when he saw how small she was, for he pawed the ground and snuffed the air, and shook his mane at her. And when she came near him, he began to lash his tail as though he were very fierce. But Mabel looked up at him, and held out her hand, and as he lifted his hoofs, she whistled the lizard's call. Rex stopped as though he had been shot. He pricked up his ears and looked at her very hard. Then Mabel whistled the call once more. Good old horsey, she said to him. You won't run away from me and be a bad horse, will you? 
Then she whistled the call for the third time. Rex put his head down low and gave a long, soft whinny. Come here, Rex, said Mabel, and the big horse walked quietly up to her and rubbed his nose on her cheek, whinnying gently, all the time as if he had been only a little colt. Uncle Robert and John couldn't believe their eyes. They were too far away to hear her whistle the call, so they just stood there and wondered how on earth Mabel was making friends with the horse. Open your mouth, Rex, said Mabel. He opened his mouth and she slipped the bit in between his teeth. Then she drew the bridle over his ears and fastened the strap as she had often seen men do when they harnessed horses. Now, Rex, said Mabel, after she had patted his nose and smoothed his neck, I want you to come up to the fence so that I can climb up on your back and ride you. Rex whinnied again and walked slowly up to the high stone wall nearby. Then Mabel clambered up on the wall, and from the wall she crept upon Rex's broad back and took hold of the reins. When he felt her sitting on him, he stood up in the air on his hind legs, but he did it so slowly that Mabel didn't mind it, for it felt as though she was on a big rocking chair and she held on tight by the reins and Rex's mane. Then, when all his four feet were on the ground again, she spoke to him once more, and he started off with her across the meadow to the place where Uncle Robert and John were standing. As soon as he got there, he stopped and stood beside them perfectly still, with Mabel laughing on his back. Oh, Mabel, Mabel, cried Uncle Robert, whose eyes were as big as saucers. How in the world did you manage to do it? Why, it's the most wonderful thing I ever saw in my life. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, I just spoke to him, Uncle Robert, and he minded me all right, said Mabel. I think he likes little girls. He seems to, said Uncle Robert, still wondering. Am I a little baby now, John? asked Mabel. Sure, Miss Mabel, said John. I'll never call you a little baby again. You're bigger than the biggest man I ever saw. Well, said Mabel after a little while. Help me down, please, Uncle Robert. Rex is good now, and you can ride him all you want to. No, no, answered Uncle Robert. You have done such a wonderful thing with him that I think he ought to belong to you after this, so I'm going to give him to you. What? To keep? For my own own? Yes, said Uncle Robert, and if Grandma will let you have him, you can keep him for your own horse to ride on always. I think you deserve to have him, and I'll get you a little girl's saddle and send it down to the house for you. Oh, goody, cried Mabel, and she jumped so with joy she nearly fell off Rex's back. Would you like to be my own horse, Rex? Rex gave a loud whinny. Thank you ever so much, Uncle Robert. You are awfully good. May I ride him home now this very minute to show Grandma? Of course, said Uncle Robert. Only hold on tight. So Mabel spoke to Rex, and off they went, slowly cantering down the road to Grandma's. Grandma was standing in the yard watering her flower beds, when all of a sudden she heard a horse's hooves clattering along the hard road. She turned around and looked and then she saw a big black horse coming straight toward her in a cloud of dust. Her eyes were not very good, and at first she did not see that there was anyone riding him. Dear me, she said to herself, that must be Robert's new horse. I wonder if he's broken loose and run away. But in a minute she noticed something like a little white bundle perched up on his back, and a second or two later she saw that it was Mabel, laughing away as she rode the great horse right through the gateway and over the lawn till she stopped him at Grandma's side. Mabel, Mabel, cried out Grandma. You on a horse's back? Why, how can you ride like that? Aren't you afraid of falling off? Oh no, said Mabel. It's lots of fun. And Grandma, Uncle Robert has given me Rex for my own ity own horse to keep as long as I live. And please let me have him. There's room in the barn for him and I'll feed him every day and take good care of him. And oh, won't it be lovely? Dear me, dear me said Grandma, who didn't know what to make of it all. I never heard of such a little girl riding a big horse. Why, Mabel, it's wonderful. That's what Uncle Robert said, answered Mabel. But you will let me, won't you? Why, yes, said Grandma, but I'm so surprised I don't know what to say. Dear, dear. By this time, Mabel had ridden Rex to the barn and climbed down off his back on the chicken coop and led him into an old stall. Then she got a rope for his halter and tied him to the manger. Her brother Walter, who didn't yet know what it all meant, helped her put straw in the stall for a bed and got a pail of water. Then Mabel pulled a lot of grass for Rex's dinner and got Jane to give her a plate of turnips for him and some salt. And when she heard Grandma tell a man to bring a bag of oats and some hay, 
she felt that at last she owned a real live horse. But she told no one about the lizard's call, for it was a secret, and she felt that perhaps the lizard wouldn't have liked to have her tell it. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 The Frogs at the Bridge Mabel was very happy with Rex, 